Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Door Village United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Sam Polito, and so glad that you found your way here uh, to Door Village this, this beautiful day, a day that we honor and worship the Lord. This Sunday is Transfiguration Sunday, and we'll hear more about that uh, as we go into the service. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're here. I am so happy to see all of you. Uh, I do have some announcements in the life of the church, things that we need to know about. Um, February 14th is Valentine's Day. That's this Wednesday. However, it is also Ash Wednesday. Now, Ash Wednesday is the day that we come together and we begin the season of Lent. We begin the season of Lent by coming forward, receiving ashes on our forehead in the sign of a cross, and we begin our Lenten fasting. Uh, there will be a drive-through, drive-through, uh, giving of ashes here at the church, meaning just pull in, uh, I'll say a greeting to you, uh, hand you uh, something to read, a devotional, and uh, we'll get ashes to you and you'll be on your way, just, just that quick. That's because it is Valentine's Day, and if you have plans that evening, I want to make sure that you still have a chance to uh, participate in the, uh, in the practice of receiving ashes for Ash Wednesday. That's 12 noon to 1 o'clock, here at the church. Just pull in and we'll, we'll uh, take care of that. Also, uh, 3.30, there's Kids Club here at the church. They'll have their Valentine's Day party. And then I invite you to come at 6 p.m. We will broadcast uh, and record a Facebook service uh, that will be 6 p.m. Uh, the, the service is Back to Basics. Remember, that's at 6 o'clock for the recorded service, if you want to watch that for, uh, for that day. And then at 7 o'clock, a lot going on on February 14th, isn't it? 7 o'clock to 7.30, a half hour Ash Wednesday service. If you come to the church, uh, 7 to 7.30, we will have a, a brief service for receiving, singing, singing, receiving ashes, and, and the like. So if you don't have plans that evening, or even if you do, come for that half hour, then head out for your Valentine's Day plans. So did you catch that? 12 noon here, and then 7 p.m. here uh, for ashes, for Ash Wednesday. Uh, Luncheon devotionals are available. Uh, many of you received them from our greeters today. And if you'd like to take one to someone, maybe a shut-in or a neighbor, just inviting them to uh, participate in the season of Lent, uh, they're there on the greeters table for you. Next Sunday, February 18th, uh, will be a, a... We haven't had one of these in, in quite a while. It'll be after worship, we'll enjoy a free... Congregational Fellowship Dinner provided by our Nurture Committee. We just wanted to start getting together, breaking bread together, having a meal, and this one's on us. Uh, just come and maybe bring someone with you. 
Uh, we're looking for a good turnout uh, and, uh, of course, wonderful food. Please do plan to attend. Are there any other announcements in the life of the church, things that we need to know about? I see... Let me put my glasses on. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's Joyce. <laughs> At the library, uh, the study is at what time? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock at the library, Wednesday. Uh, Transfiguration. You'll hear about it here, and you can hear about it there in a study setting where you can ask questions and interact. It's important. It's important not to just come on a Sunday, but to have a place where you engage Scripture Take scripture in and then talk to somebody. Talk with somebody about it. Your friend, your neighbor, your, your family, whatever it is. Engage the material. Take it into you. And then uh, talk about the material. Any other announcements? I see Sue Kaiser. Redbird mission, uh, missions trip coming up. See Sue for the exact details. With that, let's, let's just stop for a moment and, and just pray. It's, we're God's people and, and we need to seek him uh, and, and, and trust him. Let, in, silent prayer for a moment. Let's just pray. Lord, you've given us this day, and we carry into this service all that has happened to us, those times when we've let others down, those times when we've fallen short. Hear, hear us, Lord. Hear our confession and our repentance today. But, but more than that, empower us to go forward into the day and into this worship service to praise you, honor you, thank you. And to bless your holy name, you are worthy of all praise. Amen. Now at this time, let's stand and greet one another. Say hello to those worshiping with us this morning. It's uh, up to you to kind of just see when they're ready. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, just call us when you see it's time to say, join me in the public. Okay, okay. perfect, thank you. Great. Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. Welcome to church, everyone. Join together in fellowship and song. We seek grace to His holy name. Bow your hearts in reverent prayer. We seek mercy and forgiveness in our sin. Amen. Please stand if you're able and join in singing opening hymn 395, Take Time to Be Holy.
and you may be seated. As people who are people of faith, we turn to the Lord in faith and we make our requests known. Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. Another scripture, you have not because you ask not. Don't hesitate to ask of the Lord what's on your heart. Ask small things, yes. And of course, ask for the, the, the big things, those things that are in desperate need of prayer. But always continually be, be in a, a, a spirit of, of prayer and communication with God. So this is our time during the service that we might hear from one another and know how we can be in prayer for each other. And then also a time just to say, <laughs> theological word for you, woohoo! Um, when we want to say, thank you, Lord, uh, uh, God's been good to me. So this is your time. I see Cindy. Uh, yes, continue praying for our granddaughter, Audrey, who fractured her back in three places last weekend. Um, she'll be heading back to school. We'll be along during her back. So continue praying for her. Prayers for Audrey, uh, who, who has suffered a... A back injury. It's, it, it is serious. Uh, continued prayer for Audrey. I'll go right here. Paul. Pastor, can you say anything about Tom? Uh, yes. Um, his surgery was postponed yet a, another time. Um, he, in the meantime, he is doing uh, well, uh, but he does need a, a surgery that has been postponed a number of times. So continued prayers for Tom. And keep Beverly in your prayers too. Beverly Hill. He's at, the, he's at home. Yes. Right here, Penny. Um, prayers for Marilyn Holdman. She's moving on to a new chapter in her life. She's going to go to Brentwood. And um, she has a lot, of, a lot of things to worry about in her transition. Um. Marilyn has reached out and asked, asked for prayer. She, she has. And just keep her in prayer. It's, it, it'll be a time of transition, and I don't know how long that's going to take, but uh, keep, keep her in prayer during this time of transition. Thank you for that prayer request. Uh, yes. Me? Yeah, yes, Mary. <laughs> Sorry. I forgot to say your name. <laughs> Yep. Okay. Okay. Sharon, Sharon Barnes has had a fall, and uh, just we're going to get her cared for, uh, but keep her in prayer. Yes. Um, Jan. For this 96-year-old um, who has lost his wife, um, uh, prayers, prayers for them, yes. I see Carolyn. I just want to say, um, you know, Mitch is under the weather today, and so we rely on him so much, and it's a great joy to have Mike be able to just fill in at the last minute, and it's really just a great honor. Our thanks to Mike Gilloff, yes. I was on the phone twice with Mitch yesterday. Oh, poor, poor guy. He just sounded uh, just awful. Keep him in prayers. Uh, right here. Yes, we need continued prayers for Celeste. She's undergoing another procedure to see what they're going to do down in Florida. Uh, prayers, for, prayers for Celeste Dysart. Uh, keep, we're, we're keeping her in prayer, Marilyn. Yes. And in back, I saw a hand, and then it went away. 
I see you, George. I see you, George. Jan, I've always was asking if there's, she's having a procedure on the 19th that's a very risky one that they're putting a stent in in a risky spot. That's for our prayers. 100% block, and making 99% block, making it very risky. We would like very much to have her prayers. Prayers for Jan. Ulrich, uh, having a procedure the 19th. And Richard. I have two joys. Good to be back today after uh, what I went through, and I want to thank everyone for their cards, phone calls, and prayers. They do make a difference. Also, R Ron Elliott underwent uh, knee surgery, and he's, I talked to Cheryl, and he's doing really well. Thanks be to God, a good report from uh, Ron Elliott's surgery. And uh, you're coming along, Richard. You're coming along. You're in church. Thanks be to God. You're, thanks be to God. I'm turning to see if there's anyone in the choir that needs <laughs> prayer. <sighs> Pray for your pastor. <laughs> Okay, um, with, with those requests, let's uh, go to the Lord in silent prayer. Let's pray. We're, we're just so very grateful, God, that we can just talk to you. We, we can work things out. We can say, I'm confused, or I need help, or I really messed up this time. Can you help me, Lord? Or we can give you thanks and praise and joy. We, we have those today, all, all of this. For, for those in our, our church family that have spoken today, for Audrey and her, her back, continue healing. Uh, prayers for Tom Hill and, and Beverly Hill also, but Tom uh, for this surgery that it, it finally uh, take place. For Marilyn, who is home, God bless Marilyn and keep her in your care as a transition is coming. For Sharon, oh Lord, she's, she had a fall and Lord, be with her uh, even today as she, she gets some help with that. For this 96-year-old uh, man who has lost his wife, uh, a long life, and now, uh, now uh, in a time of grieving. Prayers for Mitch. We're praying for you, Mitch. Uh, Lord, watch over. Bring Mitch to full strength and health, we pray. And then uh, for Celeste Dysart, we've, we've been, had her on our prayer list, and she will continue to be in our prayers, Lord. Uh, give her a special blessing, even today, in this moment, we pray. For Jan Ulrich, for the 19th, we're keeping her uh, upcoming procedure in prayer. And uh, thanksgiving and praise that Richard's back is doing uh, better. And then this prayer for a stint that will be going in uh, for, for a friend. The, the, the stent for Jan. Also, uh, Thanksgiving for uh, Jay Elliott uh, and his surgery doing well. We're just grateful for so many things, especially for your forgiveness. Help us, Lord, even as we receive your forgiveness, help us to forgive ourselves as well. Because when you forgive us, we are truly forgiven. As far as the east is from the west, you cast our sins from us. And we walk in newness of life, looking to share your great message with others. Help us to walk with you. We pray all this 
in your name as now we pray the prayer you taught the disciples. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together using trespasses. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Yes, amen. Okay, time for our young ones to come up. I see a few of you. There you are. Come on up. Yeah, come on up. From the back there. Here we go. Here we go. Another good crowd. Do you want to have a seat? Yeah, I'm going to sit down too. Well, I... I was wondering, who is someone that you talked to today? Who is someone that you talked to? Mom and Dad. Mom and Dad. You saw Mom and Dad this morning. Who else? Who did you talk to? Um, Mimi. Mimi. Yeah, Mimi, your sister. Did you talk to anybody? Your brother? Your daddy? Good, good. Lucy, did you talk to anybody? Who? Mimi again? Yeah, good, good. It's, it's important for us to talk to the people that are in our lives, okay? And I want to tell you about somebody that I talk to every day. Somebody that I talk to every day. And it's, it's before I eat food, I'll sit down and I'll talk to them. Or before I go to bed. Yeah, it's Jesus. I... I I want him to know that I'm thinking of him, and I want him to know that I love him, and I want him to know that I know he loves me. And that's how we build friendships, and that's how we build a relationship. So it's okay every day to talk to God, talk to Jesus, okay? And it can be something as simple as, um, what's that prayer my one friend used to say? Rub-a-dub-dub, thanks for the grub. I think we can do better than that. I think we can do better than that. We can truly say, thank you for the macaroni and cheese, amen. (laughs) How's that for talking to God? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes we talk to God when we're not feeling so good, and you can just say to God, God, I'm really sad today, and I feel like crying, and and I don't feel good. Can Can you help me? And sometimes all God will say is, yes, I love you. Now, not only does God speaks to us, but sometimes we don't hear words, but sometimes we just know. Do um, you ever have uh, your mom or, or your grandma or somebody give you a hug? Yeah, sometimes. You know they love you, right? Yeah. Did they ever say a word to you? Yeah. I mean, while, while the hug, no, but you know they love us. It's kind of like that with God. How do we know that God loves us? Hmm, let me, how do you know God loves you? Because he made us. That's a beautiful answer. Uh, We wouldn't be here if God didn't love us enough. God made the world for us. What a beautiful gift to give us, right? Uh, That's how we know God loves us. What's another way we know God loves us? He, He takes care, he brings people into our lives that take care of us, that we can love and show love. So just be sure to say hi to God. Even every morning, right before your feet hit the ground, say, hi, God, and start out your day, okay? Let's pray. Let's pray. Everybody join us in this prayer with the children. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart today. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart to stay. And we just talked to God, didn't we? Let me get up first. Oh, goodness. Okay. And you are out of here. And I just want to say to the congregation, you did a good thing today.
the young children were in church today. You did a good thing today. And we will tell them about Jesus upstairs in children's church. They will know the Lord uh, through, through what we teach and what, what, what we share with them. They will know what love is uh, as they come here. Know that. Know that. Here now this morning's invitation to share. I think one of the, the greatest gifts that God gave us was the ability to, to talk and visit with each other and to share uh, something important with each other. And through the offering that is given today, we will do that. We will hold a conversation with those in our lives about who Jesus is. We'll, we'll invite them to church. We'll, we'll tell them what Jesus means to us and what he's done for us, how he's answered prayer. Through this offering, all of that happens. But remember this, it happens through us, through us. Let's stand for the doxology. What is in this plate is now no longer ours, but yours. You gave it to us, and in this offering, we give it back to you to use according to your plan and purpose in and through us, your church. Let others hear the joyful sound, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. And to that, we all say an amen. Say amen, everyone. Amen. amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Today's scripture reading is Mark chapter 9, verses 2 through 9. After six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John with him and led them up a high mountain where they were all alone. There he was transfigured before them. His clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before Elijah and Moses who were take, talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. 
He did not know what to say. They were so frightened. Then a cloud appeared above them, and a voice came from the cloud. This is my son, whom I love. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they no longer saw anyone them, with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus gave them orders not to tell anyone what they had seen until the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The word of God for the people of God. Take a walk with me this morning, will you? Let's go to the top of Mount Transfiguration. Let's see what we can see in these verses here in the Gospel of Mark chapter 9 that can apply to us here today and guide and lead us. It all begins with three disciples, Peter, James, and John. Jesus invites them to go with them. He says, come with me. And they go to, it says, a high mountain. Just them, just, just them, apart, alone, by themselves. Three disciples with Jesus. And alone, they climb. You know, I was thinking about this. I like that idea. That idea of alone with Jesus. Just, just meditate on that just for a moment while we're together. What it's like to be alone with Jesus. What I, what I want for us, for you and for us, is to find that place. That, that high place that alone with Jesus place, a prayer place, a, a fellowship place. <clears throat> they climb Transfiguration Mountain. Now the next part <clears throat> is important. It's, it's everything. Transfigured. That is the word scripture used. It, it, Jesus is transfigured before them. So, so what did the three C. His clothes, they turn dazzling bright, dazzling white. Let me ask you, have you ever been snow blind? Do you know what I'm talking about? So bright, so white, so sparkling, dazzling, glimmering, light reflecting off the snow that you can't see anything else. That had to be what it was like for the three. What I believe happened here is this. The three were, were seeing into, as it were, another realm. A slice of heaven here on earth. Their, their, their human eyes were struggling to comprehend what was happening. It, it, it's like that for us at times, isn't it? We, we strain to see, we try to comprehend what God is doing. It, right in front of us, God is at work, and we're trying to understand the pure, bright, holy, sacred, a glimpse of God here today. That is our goal. In our lives, uh, that is what we must have in our lives. And that is what must have been like for those three up on the mountain. And then there were three. No, no, not the three disciples. There, there was Elijah, the prophet, Moses, the lawgiver, and of course Jesus. The three standing there, having a conversation, just, just talking. Now, my question here is this. Just, did you ever wonder what they were talking about? This passage of Scripture, I don't know, when I look in the Bible, it doesn't say what they were talking about. The Bible is silent, but we can read between the lines here a little bit. 
Perhaps Elijah talked about all the prophets, the words of the prophets of old that were being fulfilled. Their words in Jesus being fulfilled. And then there's Moses. Perhaps he talked about the law, how it is fulfilled in the sacrifice of Jesus. Between the two of them, prophecy and the law, the law and the prophets are fulfilled. And, and let me say this to us today. We need Elijah in our lives. We do, we do. We need Elijah to point the way as a prophet to show us how prophecy foretold of the coming Savior, and that Savior is Jesus. We need Moses. We need the law of God in our lives. And why was the law given? The law was given to convince us of our sins, to show us what is right and what is not right, to show us that we are in need of a Savior. That Savior needs to be the sinless Son of God who never broke the law. It needs to be Jesus. Yes, Elijah and Moses are essential in understanding salvation in Jesus Christ. So, up on the mountain, dazzling bright, they talk. And the three disciples Watch. Then, all of a sudden, Peter just hey, can't contain himself, and he blurts out, whoa, it's good to be here. Let's, let's make this permanent, he says. Three tents, three dwellings is the literal translation. One for you, Elijah, one for you, Moses, and yes, one for Jesus. Now, a little aside here. By the way, to set up a tent in Jesus' day meant that you planned to stay there for a while. Nomadic travelers would, would carry their tents with them, moving from watering hole, green pasture to green pasture. And when they stopped and stayed... They set up a tent. It means they were going to be there a while. So that's why Peter said, let's set up three tents, three dwellings. So what's next? What's next in the text? I see clouds. Clouds. <clears throat> Think about it. They're up on a mountain, a high mountain, and some clouds rolled in. Now, closest thing I've ever experienced to this was when I was flying in a plane and we were going along and then the plane d d did what? You, you know where I'm headed. Flew right into a cl large cloud. As I looked out the window, I, I could see nothing. Nothingness. It was as if a, a thick fog, zero visibility had pressed in. But then, in our scripture lesson, something awesome happens. There's a voice. The voice speaks for the three to hear. This is my son, my beloved. Listen to him. Here's what I believe. That message, my son, listen to him. Those words that God spoke, they're for us today. They're for you. They're for me. Right now, today. Listen. Listen was the message from God. Listen to my beloved son. Listen to Jesus. Now, where can we find his words? It, it, it's very straightforward. Find your way to a Bible. Get out your phone and, and just type in a scripture verse. 
Where can we hear instructions, his instructions? It's simple. It's available to us. The word of God, the Bible. In our text, suddenly the clouds lifted. Gone. Moses and Elijah, gone. The voice of God, finished. And then there was Jesus. Just Jesus. The, the time on the mountain of transfiguration was coming to an end. And they saw what they had come to see. And they knew what they must do. Because Jesus said to them, Oh, tell everyone about what just happened, right? No, no, did you hear it? Not so fast. What did Jesus say to the three? He said, tell no one. Wait, wait until after I am raised from the dead. We know the rest of the story. How he suffered and how he died for our sin. We know the rest of the story. How he was dead and buried and after three days alive again. We know the rest of the story. How he rose in resurrection power. And Jesus promised the same for us. Eternal life in resurrected bodies. Again, we're studying this on Tuesday nights. If you want to take up a Lenten discipline, uh, carve, carve out a time Tuesday nights at 6 p.m., and we're talking about heaven there and what it means to be in resurrected bodies. So what am I saying here? We are to tell others. There's no prohibition to us. We need to tell them what we know to tell them what Scripture says, tell them what Jesus promised. We are the ones on this side of Transfiguration Mountain. We are now the witnesses commissioned to share the truth. The truth is, Jesus is our Savior. Jesus is the Son of God. And with that, with that, we have the message of salvation. And to that, all of us say an amen. Everyone says amen. amen. And uh, we finish with the song, uh, hymn number 569. It will be on the screen. We've a story to tell to the nations. Let's stand.
What will you say to the Lord today? Will it be thank you for a meal? That's always, always appropriate. Will it be thank you for the day? Thank you for those that love you and that you love? Always appropriate. But let your conversation go beyond that. And let that conversation be held through God's word. Open the Bible. See what is there. Go into the Gospel of John. If you're looking for a place to read, just start in the Gospel of John. And it is there you will meet Jesus. God bless you and keep you in his care and send you on your way with his blessings. Amen. Amen.